You can now use Xamarin UI Test, the automated UI testing framework for Xamarin and Xamarin Forms with .NET MAUI, but maybe you shouldn't use it. Um, what that's all about, find out in this video. In all seriousness, uh, this is probably something that you only want to do whenever you have a lot of UI tests from your Xamarin or Xamarin Forms application, and you want to transition to .NET MAUI and still use that UI test for as long as you can because the App Center UI test um, um, future has been uncertain for a while. Um, it has taken a long time for the Xamarin UI test packages to be updated to .NET MAUI as well. So the future is kind of unclear of where this is going with the uh, automated UI test for Don and Maui. So whatever I'm about to show you here today, use it all at your own risk. Um, and again, I can't stress this enough. This is probably only for unblocking you from transitioning from Xamarin to Don and Maui to make sure that you can still run your UI test for the time being. Um, so, okay, with that out of the way, um, there is this crazy cool thing in App Center, which is called App Center Test, and you can run your UI test, your automated UI test on actual physical devices in the cloud. And that's what we've been doing for a long, long time. And the framework that we're doing it with is Xamarin.UI test, but you can also do it with Appium, and I don't even know all the other names, but you can do it with a bunch of other frameworks inside of App Center as well. Um, and I'm not really going to show you that much uh, about the App Center stuff here. Um, you can figure that out for yourself. Like again, this is for the transition scenarios only, so you have it already in place, right? Um, I'm going to show you how you can set up your test um, um, project for .NET MAUI, basically. So let's hop over to Visual Studio and let's see how you can do that. So there is a couple of things that are good to know, but I will walk you through them, no worries. Um, so what you probably have, if we look here in the Solution Explorer, um, you probably already have a test project right here. So this is my test project, my app tests. Um, and if you have that already, the chances are that if you just update the dependencies for that and your tests and your UI is still very much the same between Xamarin and .NET MAUI, you can reuse that test library. So don't worry about that. You can just, well, and there's no hurt in trying, right? Just uh, try to update the dependencies, run your .NET MAUI app against that library, and maybe it still works, maybe with a couple of tweaks, um, but maybe it will still work. In this um, video, I'm going to show you a little bit how to set up a new test project. Again, this should only be for your transition scenarios. Don't go creating new test libraries and stuff like that. Um, what other options are there? I will talk a little bit about that at the end of the video, but maybe you want to refresh your test library and um, 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 transfer over all your tests from the old old Xamarin library to the new um, a fresh library, basically. So um, I'm going to show you that. But first things first, um, in your .NET MAUI application, you want to manage and you get packages. So let's go into that. And here under the install tab, there is the xamarin.testcloud.agent. It's still called Xamarin. Um, and what this does, this is only needed for iOS because what it does is it uses a couple of private um, Apple APIs and it spins up a HTTP server inside of your application that will accept commands to um, 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 control your application inside of uh, .NET MAUI, inside of iOS. To control your application in an automated way. So tap the button whenever you send a request, an HTTP request to your application. So that's how that works. But obviously, Apple is not going to accept that in the App Store. And you do not want to have, if you're going to distribute some other way, you do not want to have your app uh, with an HTTP server that can remotely execute all kinds of things, right? You don't want to have that. So this is something that you do not want to enable in your production app. Um, please take care of that. And how you would typically do that in your Xamarin application is if you would go to your app delegate for iOS, so that's here now in your .NET MAUI app under platforms, iOS, app delegate. And you would do this Xamarin Calabash start. And whenever this is not called, um, then the library would not be included and you would be on the safe side. So that means also um, that you can never have the exact same binary that is being UI tested that will go to the App Store. You would also have to always have to do another rebuild of your application without this code in there. So um, that's there as well. Um, the way to do that is uh, now, because what I noticed it, with this new update is that the package would still be included 
included, which could uh, form a problem whenever you would release it to the um, Apple App Store. So to overcome that, there is a couple of steps that we need to take. You can see here now this um, compiler directive. You've probably already worked with these, like if Windows, if Debug, um, you see it here in the MAUI program as well. If Debug, and you can uh, do the if Windows if you want me something uh, Windows specific, but you can define your own um, 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 constants here as well. So how you can do that is basically go to your Solution Explorer, right click on your project. You can also do it in the CS project directly if that's what you want, but you can do it here under the properties. And uh, whenever this properties thing load, you can go over to all the different combinations of um, 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 the build configuration and the platform that you want to build and specify this constant. So if we go here to the build tab and then the general one, you can see here conditional compilation symbols. And here for debug and Net7 Android, we have these symbols. For debug, Net7 iOS, we have these symbols. And you can already see here in here, like, hey, we have this iOS and mobile, and here we have the Mac Catalyst ones. Um, so there's a couple of different things that we, we have here, but you can also specify your own. So if you look here at the iOS ones, uh, then you can see, hey, we have this enable test cloud in here now. And I can just input any value here and then add it, and then it will uh, automatically be added here to this constants, um, and uh, you can use it inside of your application. So whenever you do debug and uh, Net7 iOS, then suddenly you would uh, be able to use that constant. And uh, if you're not defining it, then uh, that piece of code will not be compiled inside of your app. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, so we have it only for iOS because we only use this for iOS. So enable test cloud is here added. Um, again, just check the repository that's linked down below how this all fits together. You can find it here in the CS Proj here as well. Um, you will see these uh, kind of property groups with like, um, hey, this condition, debug any CPU and you can see the enable uh, test cloud in here, right? So that's how this all works. Um, but maybe we just want to make really sure that this package does not end up in our builds, right? So what we can also do, if you've installed a NuGet package, you will get this reference inside of your CS project as well, right? This item group and this package reference with Xamarin Test Cloud Agent. So um, what we also want to do is have this condition to only do this for iOS, obviously, because this is only uh, for iOS. I think it does that automatically. And if you really want to uh, take it to the next level and not do this, what you could also do is create your own build configuration. So besides debug and release, you can create your own one. So if you go to the build menu and then configuration manager, um, you can here under active solution configuration, you can create a new one. So you can create a new one with a name if that's what you want. Um, and you can um, 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 do that with enable test cloud. You can name it anything that you want as well. And whenever you do a build, so you would do .NET build minus C, so configuration, enable test cloud, uh, it will just take all these things. So you can now also say like, hey, if this condition is configuration uh, debug, but now configuration test cloud, you can put that in here. So only for whenever we're building for iOS and the configuration is test cloud, we are adding this package. If not, this package will not be included at all. So you can play with that. Um, if that's something that you're running into while um, deploying your app to the App Store, then that is some options that you want to explore here. Okay, so with that all in place, we basically have everything we need on this side. Um, and what we want to do then is go over to the actual tests, right? So here in the Solution Explorer, we have this test project. Now what I did, um, I, I did start from scratch. Again, please don't do that. Just use it for your transition scenarios. On your solution, you can do right click new add project. Um, and here I just took a regular uh, class library actually. So this class library right here. And then you do next and you can give it a name. So in my case, it was my app test right here. You can do next and you can um, select what um, target you want to do, right? The target framework. So you can choose all these options depending on what is installed on your machine. Um, basically just choose whatever because we're going to change it anyway. Uh, this is net seven, which is fine. I'm not going to click create, but you will get this project. And what you want to do is go in here and set this to target framework. And, and there's also target frameworks. So make sure that you do the target framework and set it to net four eight 
right? So that's .NET Framework 4.8, the full framework thing 4.8. Um, this is because the tooling for Test Cloud, um, at some level, they don't understand .NET 6, .NET 7, .NET 5 even, nothing of that. They just want .NET 4.8. So this is the only framework, the highest framework that will be understood by Xamarin UI test um, to run your tests on. So make sure that you set it to this, else you will run into trouble. The error is very vague that you will get. It has to do with testcloud.exe. Um, so if you see errors regarding to that, double check this one because that is what you want to do. Then you want to install all of these NuGet packages. So I think you can just start with NUnit and Xamarin UI test, and then the rest will be brought in automatically, but make sure that you have all these NuGet packages and you should be good to go with your tests. Now, I made a couple of simple tests. So here on my main page, flipping back to my .NET MAUI app here on my main page, um, what I did, the only thing I added in code was here this automation ID, the increment button. So now I can reference uh, to this button with this, this identifier increment button, and in my test I can reference that and I can tap it and I can swipe it and I can do all kinds of things, but you're using this only in your transition scenario, so you have these automation IDs already in there and you know how to reference this. So inside of our tests, now we have these base tests. I created a little base test here um, and I will have this running this for Android and iOS because that's the uh, only supported platforms at least that you can use with .NET MAUI. The iApp, that's kind of like your uh, mirror of the actual .NET MAUI app where you can do your interactions on. Um, Whenever you specify these, the, uh, this will kind of like be injected inside of this app base test app as, as kind of like a dependency injection, if you will. So we can uh, um, query the platform right here. Um, so you don't have to do anything for this just by specifying these test fixtures. Um, for each run, it will inject it in here and I set it to this little property so I can uh, um, figure out which platform I'm running on later. Um, and here we have this app um, reference so that I can query to this app inside of my test uh, classes, right? And then here I have this little um, um, piece of code that's going to run before each test. So that's kind of like your setup for the test. And this is an end unit thing right here set up, uh, which is called immediately before each test. So each test is going to do this over and over again. Um, I'm going to initialize the app. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little screenshot, right? You can uh, take screenshots whenever you're running it in the cloud. You don't know what's going on. So you'll need screenshots to see what's happening. You can also save the screenshots locally. You can run all these tests locally if that's what you want on emulators or physical devices. Um, and you can have a setting that also sets this and save the screenshots locally. Um, but there it's less useful because you can actually see what's going on on your screen, right? So We've got that in place. Now, what does this app initializer do? Um, this basically bootstraps our application. So here that platform comes in handy. We push that down to this level. And then depending on the platform uh, for Android, we're going to do configure app um, Android. We specify the APK file where that lives. And I made it a little relative path uh, so that it can find it on my disk. If you are running this in the cloud, this setting is disregarded and it will find the APK based on the a command line that you specify to send it up to test cloud. And I'm going to do start app and I'm going to say, hey, you want to clear everything about this app first so that we have a fresh install of the application each time. For iOS, kind of like the same thing. Um, you can point it to like an installed app with the bundle identifier, or you can point it to this, this app uh, right here. But running this on iOS is not supported on Windows. Um, it should work with Visual Studio for Mac all the same, but this does kind of does the same. Or, you know, we have a platform that we don't recognize and we're going to throw this little exception. Now, with that in place, I have this main page tests. So this is kind of like a, 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 a format that is used a lot with um, uh, this Xamarin UI test where you kind of like mirror your tests per page um, because it's visual UI testing, right? So we have this main page and I'm going to this this little using query here because this typing this all the time is a kind of a pain in the neck. So we have this little alias here for the query. Um, and now I can say query count button and I'm going to find that count button here, which is marked increment button, right? So that's our automation ID. Um, we get the platform in here because we're inheriting from base test. So we have to um, um, provide that to our base test uh, constructor. And then I have tests. So this is again an end unit um, attribute right here with a test, tap one time, tap two times. So this is kind of like my different testing scenarios right here. And this is a REPL, um, which is, I, I always keep forgetting what it stands for, repeat, evaluate, print loop. No, I think the R is something different. But uh, whenever you run this test, you will get a command line window and you can uh, start 
um, typing these queries um, in, in that command line window. So that's easy for debugging your tests. Uh, but again, you're working with the UI tests already for a long time, so you already know this. So I have these tests I'm waiting for element that count button. I'm going to tap it, and then I'm going to see if that label actually changed, right? Because the file new done in Maui application has this little increment thingy here. Um, so it's going to show you that little, and we are going to um, um, see if it actually updates the caption here and what is going on. Now, if you go to View and Test Explorer, um, then after a build, you will find these tests right here. So it will pick up on this, this test project, it will build it, it will discover these tests, and you can start running these tests. Now, one thing, um, the, again, I'm showing this on Windows, so one thing that you want to make sure, um, if the APK file does not exist, which happens if you just do a build right here in your Solution Explorer or press F5, um, it just does a build and it doesn't always produce the APK file. So what you might want to do is just start a debug session right here. Just click that, um, run it on the emulator so you're sure that the APK here exists on the file system. So we have that right here, the APK, um, so that the end, of course, that the file path is, is the correct one here in this app initializer that it can find it um, the right way, that it's the actual path to that. Also, what you want to make sure is that if you're going to fiddle with your XAML code, like if I'm going to change this automation ID here, you need to have that version inside of your APK or deployed to the emulator. Because if you're going to make changes here, um, but it's not deployed to the emulator, and you're going to write in your tests this new automation ID, you're kind of out, out of sync, right? It's not going to find that in the deployed version. So that's always, if you're going to work with these tests, something fun that you will run into eventually, um, and you will learn that very, very quickly. So now, in our test explorer, I can just right click this test, I can say run, and we can see here on the emulator that this um, um, APK will come up, it will install the application, or actually it, it, it is installed in this case, so it will find it, it will boot the application, and it will uh, tap automatically that button. So let me put it outside of my camera screen, and you can see it, I'm not doing anything, and it will tap that button one time, and you can see that my test has succeeded, right? Because it sees this right caption right here, so my UI test has ran, and if I do the same thing for uh, the tap two times, you will say the same thing happening again. It's going to restart the app because we requested a clear um, app, a, a, a resetted app right here. And you will see that whenever we run, it will tap it once, it will wait for a little bit, it will tap it twice. And now we're clicked two times. And again, my test has succeeded. So you can run them locally. Um, you can now push them up to the App Center cloud. But this is how you can um, take your tests from your Xamarin application to .NET MAUI and still use them for a little bit longer. Now, if you go to the repository that is linked down below in the video description, you will also find a GitHub action and a Azure Pipelines YAML file um, that will send it to um, the App Center test uh, environment so that it will send it up to the cloud. Um, if that's something that you want to do manually in that YAML file, you can also find kind of like the command line prompt and all the steps that I took to actually get up to that point. You will find a command line um, uh, command also to do that manually from a command line terminal if that's what you want. Um, if you can figure out, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can respond to that. Um, I think I've said it enough already, but please only use this for your transition scenarios. Um, I think more content around this will come out later. But App Center, you know, there hasn't been any real progress there for a long time. Um, this Xamarin UI test stuff has been updated just for compatibility to unblock you for your projects to take your UI test from Xamarin to Dan and Maui, um, which kind of like begs the question, hey, what should I be using, right? Um, we're investigating that. What is kind of like like um, the way that is preferred from within Microsoft, from the Don and Maui team. But um, Don and Maui still produces like platform apps, right? You have the iOS apps, you have Android apps. It all translates to whatever um, components you're using on Android and iOS. So you can use all the tools that come together with that. So I think for Android, you can use Appium. For iOS, you have probably also tools that I don't know right now. But you can use all the tools available there, and some of them you can actually run on App Center. And there's probably other solutions uh, besides App Center to do that. You can run it on your local machine for now to just verify what's going on there. So more guidance there is coming. Um, but just remember, you can use all the tools that are available today. And I've seen some initiatives with Don at Maui and um, um, uh, namely Appium as well. So make sure to check that out and see if maybe that's a nice project, a nice challenge for you uh, to 
to see uh, to come up with a nice project to make that work for you. And please also let me know down in the comments so I can make a video about it and spread that love um, more and more throughout our wonderful community. Thanks so much for um, watching this little longer video than usual. I hope you learned something and it was very useful to you. If that was, then please click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll be seeing you for the next video.